I realize now, um, as stupid as that sounds, but I, you know, learn from my mistake. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today we're heading to the shop to work on our Kibler Woods Runner. I'm getting ready to stand the stock here, starting with our 150 grit sandpaper. And I wanted to mention, as I take out these pins, I've made up this scrap wood block here to hold and identify each of my pins so I don't lose track. Generally, I don't. I think all the holes are the same diameter, so maybe this is overkill, but I've, I've drilled holes and then I've marked a corresponding code here for what each pin belongs to. So TGR is our trigger guard rear, TGF is trigger guard front. Um, trigger barrel one, two, three, four with barrel one being the rear, and then ramrod entry pipe, ramrod middle pipe, ramrod front pipe. So I'm setting this over to the side, uh, out of the way so I can't dump or spill them. I think it's a, a decent way to keep track of those parts. Following along with Jim's tutorial on, on assembling one of these, I'm going to start sanding at our buttstock. So I've moved my support up to fully support my buttstock while we're sanding here. I've got 150 grit sandpaper. And then one major change I'm trying to make here is I'm trying to follow Jim's lighting tips. So I've set up an incandescent bulb here to give me some different light. And you can see the difference between my LED ring light that's up here with the camera in this incandescent bulb, you can see a lot more of kind of that rough area in that stock, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's wood, it's a natural material. But I, I really noticed Jim talking about that in his build video that lighting is really important when it comes to sanding. And so I'm, I'm trying to make a note of that and, uh, and improve on that where I can. From here on out, it's, it's pretty basic stuff, I think. How you doing, Beans? Doing good? Good. At this point, I have 150 grit sanded everything up to our entry pipe. It's getting a little bit faster now. Actually, I'm just seeing a spot that I missed. Right in there. Kind of right up in here. Okay, that's okay. We'll go back and get that. That's why it's nice to, to get, her, get out and look at this in a different light. So just kind of rotating it there for you in that incandescent light bulb. I think Jim's right, it is a really different light. 
And then I'm seeing some stuff in here I don't like to come in there and even that out a little bit, even back over to there. And we've got some in there. So I'm going pretty slow. Uh, I'm not in a hurry. My goal at the end of today's session is to have this ready for carving. But once we get through the 150, it goes pretty quick up to our, our 400. I'm rotating this now. So we're going to clamp our lock mortise or our lock panels into our vise. And we're going to pop out our ramrod pipes so that we can work the entirety of our barrel channel. And, uh, and then we'll just start moving up with sandpaper. On my pipes, I'm just going to go ahead and mark them on this interior facet here, just with front and rear, just so I can keep better track. Again, I'm not a pro at this stuff. Um, I'm going to try to keep my barrel in as long as I can. Um, so I'm going to be kind of really focusing on this area here. Really from this shadow line over. And then I'll pop the barrel out and do both sides of kind of my barrel channel at once. Trying to minimize that time that that's out. Just for my own personal comfort. Out here at the muzzle, you can see right here where I'm tapping with my finger. Uh, I've pushed my barrel pin through so that I can work this side while keeping this whole construct stable. I'm going to bring my sandpaper out to this nose cap. And according to Jim's videos, we're going to file this screw end down a little bit in our nose cap uh, before peening it to create a rivet with that screw. Uh, and out here, our foreend, just like with our butt plate and the other hardware, I'm going to go ahead and try to match my nose cap to my stock. Here where the nose cap, the stock, and the barrel meet, I do have a little bit of a discrepancy there between the wood stock and the nose cap. I think that might just be from my own installation. But I'm going to come in along the top of our barrel channel here with a little bit of sandpaper. And that's going to finish that right up, I think. Shouldn't be any problem. Again, I think it was uh, my own limited experience there kind of lending towards that so first because it's in my way a little bit I'm gonna hit that screw head you could probably hit that with a file for a little bit more efficiency I'm making long strokes. Be sure to take that file and sandpaper up to and through where we've already worked that area of the stock just so we have a nice even blend. I've moved my support out to the, just underneath my muzzle so that I have as much support here as I can get to peen this over. I'm finding that that little bump is affecting my file strokes and I want this to be nice and even on the muzzle. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up so that we can file our rivet to level and level our nose cap to our stock. To do this or to complete this rivet, in my experience, I like using the ball peen end of a hammer. This is just a small engraving hammer. Uh, any small ball peen will do. And for me, riveting is not about force. It's about the number of hits and concentration of hits. So what I like to do is I like to bounce around the edge of my rivet with that peen. And I'm traveling clockwise around that rivet. Hitting that peen around the edge. This might be overkill because brass is so soft anyway. But I've, I've done a lot of rivets on things. 
and uh, I like doing it this way. After a little bit of extra work, I've polished up some of the issues that we had where I had some tool marks still remaining. I've done the entirety of the four stock with our 150 grit sandpaper. I'm now going to jump up to about a 220, 250-ish grit sandpaper. Do the same thing over, polishing as much of the wood as I can here. And then we're going to jump into scraping the stock with some card scrapers for a little bit more of a different finish than I've done before on previous kits. Now I'm going to pop the barrel out and do a little work on the barrel channel of the stock because I haven't had full access to it with the barrel in here. From here on out, I'm going to be working a lot of this stock without the barrel in and I want to make sure I'm being very careful just because of the thinness of this stock. So we're going to slow down a little bit and make concentrated, focused movements. I've been asked about the screwdrivers that I'm using. I have this Chapman gun screwdriver kit on my bench. I also have one of these in my range toolbox. Really handy. Has a bunch of bits in here, but you, you'll notice that I, there are times where I still just grab the screwdriver on my bench, but um, I'll switch out a lot of these bits because they're handy. With all of my sandpaper done here, we're going to take a little bit of a deviation, I think, um, from the Kibler videos and then what I've done in the past. Traditionally, I'll just go through, take a 400 or a 600 grit sandpaper, finish this puppy off, and finish. Stain it, be done with it. What I want to play with is cabinet scrapers on this stock. A lot of the original stocks that we see on original long rifles, at least in my experience, have been scraped with some kind of scrape. To prepare this stock for that, I'm gonna go ahead and whisker the stock a couple times so that I know where I have been with my scrapers and where I haven't been. Whiskering is a simple process of intentionally wetting the stock to raise the end grain in the wood so that it will curl. And uh, it's gonna look like beard whiskers <laughs> But this wetting and then the subsequent drying of the moisture does something to that grain and cause it to, it causes it to curl up. This is something that can and does happen with wood over time. So the theory here is that by intentionally whiskering the stock and raising that grain to then remove it, that grain won't be there in the future to rise up and cause any problems. So I just have some water here from my hydrant in a nice handmade leather and beeswax cup I have here in the shop. Keeping the water out of the inlets, it doesn't need to go in there to my knowledge. This is nice too because we're gonna get a look at how good our staining or our, our sanding I should say went. This will expose any errant tool marks or file marks or just spaces we missed. While that dries, we can talk a little bit about scrapers. Again, I'm not an expert. There are some other great people out there to ask, a lot of great other people to ask, some other videos and things to talk about it. But a scraper is just, in this term, is just a simple cabinet scraper is what I'm gonna be using. Some of these that here in my shop are custom. Thanks to my father, you can purchase a variety of cabinet scrapers or, or wood scrapers out there. Um, 
something like Woodcraft. I've heard like a store like Home Depot can have them. Or you can make your own. And so a scraper, um, by definition, just scrapes wood. And um, you can make your own with a piece of tool steel or an old saw blade, or you can just pur purchase a cheap saw blade and turn it into a scraper. But on this scraper, on each of these edges, it's a little, it's difficult to see, but there is a burr ground into one side or sometimes both sides of a scraper. And that burr is the sharp edge that we're going to use to scrape this wood. A scraper can be straight like this. A scraper can be curved like this. Uh, I think it's good to have a couple of each. I really like this scraper. I've used it on a lot of projects. I really like that kind of French curve shape. And then we've got a scraper like this. These are Clifton brand uh, from Sheffield in England. Uh, some of these that I've got here. So on this one, these long sides are clean, they're not sharp, but our convex curve here is ha, has a burr on either side, and then our concave side over here has a burr on either side. So with this, I can get into the curves, and I can get around the curves, and that's, that's what we're focused on here. We're not going to be removing a lot of wood. We're not shaping with these scrapers. We're using them as kind of our last sanding or, or stock texturing step. Our stock is still drying, but you can see there a little bit of that texture coming up with that grain curling and whiskering up. That's what we're going to be removing. That's what we're going to be removing with our scrapers. Now, uh, in Jim's own videos and, and then in other um, talks I've listened to and, and gunsmiths that I've talked to, scraping be can be considered a more complex technique. Um, so I'm doing it here at my own risk. Um, I hope that I don't ruin this, um, but that's something to consider. A lot of people say just, if you're new to this, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with woodworking or hand tools, it's a lot easier just to go through and sand it to a high grit and be done. I really like uh, a hand scraped finish on a rifle, and uh, the friend who's getting this at the end, who, who this kit is for, and it's his kit, um, told me kind of do whatever I wanted to, so we're going to experiment a little bit and get a little weird with it. Well, I don't know how many years on this earth I got left. I'm going to get real weird with it. I don't know if I'm what I'm doing wrong. Uh, I did not like the scraper finish on those whiskers. So I went through, sanded all the whiskers off. I'm gonna whisker it again, remove the whiskers with the sandpaper again, and then we'll come in with our cabinet scrapers. I don't know if the wood being a little damp, if my cabinet scrapers weren't cutting it or what, but I've tested a couple spots here and I think that's gonna work a little bit better. You know, weird things that you think about while you're working. I realize now um, as stupid as that sounds, but, you know, learn from my mistake. I fully attached our nose cap, uh, and it's not done. So it's, it doesn't have any solution or anything on it. It's not very smart on my part. We can still sand and polish it in place where it's at. We might have to get a little creative on the brass finish, though. Um, I was watching Peter Kelly's video on doing his Woods Runner. He talked about using black powder fouling to age brass on his, I'm thinking we might be able to prematurely age our nose cap on the stock with some black powder fouling because it's going to get some of that grime and, and nastiness anyway in time. So it might be an easy way for us to still finish out our nose cap after we've a little bit foolishly mounted it to the stock.
I'm not talking a lot while I'm doing this scraping. It takes a lot more focus than sanding does because you're working with the grain rather than just shaving it away. But here you can see a little bit of that effect. So here in this wrist, I've been scraping and you can see these parallel lines and facets in that stock, in that light. And that's what I'm going for. I'm going for nice even scrapes down through the stock. Here I've got a little bit of grain difference as we wrap around this toe here that I'm working through. But I'm finding if I run into an issue going one direction with the scraper, I can turn the scraper around. So say if I'm pushing the scraper, if I flip the scraper around and pull it towards me, and kind of cut through whatever issue I'm having. So this is kind of exploratory for me as we continue to work through this area.
With those last few strokes, we've completed scraping our stock, and I like the texture. It's different than uh, going through and doing a high sanding on it, at least in what I was able to execute here. Uh, there's a couple areas, I think, around these mortises, or these panels, where I think I'd like to clean them up just a little bit with some sandpaper, just so they keep that nice established look that they come with on the kit, but like here in the fore end area here where we've got our arm is gonna go and we shoulder this piece, we've got some nice grip. I really like the facets in the wrist. So overall, I'm happy with the scraping on this. Now, I I'm a little nervous with how it's gonna look uh, once we get oil and things on there, but I think we're ready now to start laying out our carving and uh, start heading down that road. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.